All right, Jamaica Sharika Jackson has for the second consecutive year made the final cut for World Athletics' Female Athlete of the Year Award. The prestigious award recognizes the most outstanding athletes of the 2023 season. Now, let's talk about the finalists for the women. Sharika Jackson, the 100-meter world silver medalist and 200 champion, Faith Kipiegan set three world records in 2023. Femke Ball, the world 400 meter hurdles gold medalist. Yudemar Rojas, the world triple jump champion. And a safer, the marathon world record holder and world champion. Let's now look at the men who made the final list of five. Neeraj Chopra, the highly popular Indian javelin thrower. Ryan Krauser, the USA shot put master. Monda Duplantis, the king of the pole vault. Kelvin Kiptum of Kenya, he's the man in the marathon at the moment. And the fast one, Noah Lyles, the triple world champion, 100, 200, and 4 by 100. As you saw from the female list, there was no place for the often brash American Shakira Richardson. Shakira's absence is dividing opinions, at least on social media. Many feeling that the 100 world champion did enough to make the final cut. Others unsurprised by her absence. Leighton Levy, our in-house track and field analyst, joins us to discuss. Leighton, where do you stand on this? Surprised, not surprised, Shakira Richardson, not among the finalists for the Women's Award for Athlete of the Year? No, I'm not. And I don't know why people are surprised that she has been, well, she did make the final cut. Shakira, Shakira won the World Championship title, 100 meter title. That's fantastic. And she ran um, almost unbeaten in the course of the year. But compared to what everybody else did, let's, let's use Sherika Jackson because they run, they run the same events. Sherika won the Diamond League title in both the 100 and 200. She won the 200 meter world title and, of course, the 100 meter silver medal. Shakara winning the, the bronze medal in, in, in Budapest. When you compare the records, Sherika's record is much better than hers. And it, her record doesn't compare to the other women at all. So why I don't know why people are surprised that she wouldn't make the final cut. She, she, she had a great year by her standards, given since, I mean, since she turned pro. But in comparison to the other women, Ro has four world, fourth world title. You know, she, you know Faith Kipiegan, who I think will win it all. You know, few world records, and of course, a diff ridiculously difficult double in the 1500 and 5000. First and only woman to do it. You know, how does Shakari's records match up to those women? I'm not surprised at all. Yeah, for sure, Leighton. And I guess maybe this is a situation of popularity coming to the fore because the truth is Shakira Richardson is one of the most popular women in track and field. And given her story of a 2023, almost a redemption type story turning up um, to the surprise of many winning the world title and in the fashion that she did in emphatic fashion in what is the Blue Ribbon event. So maybe you could forgive those who don't follow the sport as closely as we do to maybe be a little bit surprised that she didn't end up on the final list, even though, without a doubt, it is the correct decision. Yeah, I guess, you know, if you're, if you're a cursory fan of track and field and you don't know what else anybody else is doing, maybe you think that she's been hard done. But the reality is that, you know, sentiment, sentiment hardly has anything to do with these things. I mean, it's... It's the, it's the hard fact of accomplishment. Uh, what she accomplished in 2023 compared to between 2019 and 2021 and 2022, when she did nothing, mm -hmm. of course it's going to look great that she won a world title. Of course it's going to look great, great that she only lost once to Julian Alfred during the course of the season over the 100 meters. But, you know, as I said before, when it doesn't match up to the other accomplishments of the other women, in which was an outstanding year for women. Generally, in terms of when you look at the other five panelists and what they've managed to accomplish. Yeah, I think the main point that you're making to uh, Leighton is that as a sprinter, Sherika Jackson's log was far more solid than Shakira Richardson's log was. And uh, to be quite honest, 
um, Sherika Jackson is not among the top performers in this list. I, I would think that she's in the lower half of the list of nominees here. And um, if you think about that and think that she outperformed Shakiri overall for the year, then it's pretty obvious that Shakiri's performances didn't warrant her in this final, li final list. Absolutely. I mean, you know, as you mentioned, the, the woman in the final five here would have probably been a content in any other year, regardless of, the, of who, was, who was winning that year. Um, but when you compare what Shakari did this year, it's, I mean, it's nice. You, you, you win your first world title and you're 23 years old and you finally live up, to, live up to the potential and the expectation. But in real terms, it's still not good enough to win athlete of the year. I mean, that's 30 years is supposed to reflect the, the female athletes who have done exceptional work above everybody else, and she doesn't fit that bill this year at all. Yeah, well said, Levy. Let's have a look at the men's award now, the short list for that. Leighton Levy, a really good short list on the men's side. Do you think it will be tougher to decide on the men's winner um, than it will be to um, select the women's athlete of the year? Absolutely. I, I still can't figure out who's going to win it. <laughs> because here's the thing. Um, keep them... The marathon and the marathon world record is a, a fantastic performance. But those in the in, in the singularity of that event, it's very great and the world record makes it fantastic. But the reality is when you look at Ryan Crowther, for example, and Mondo Duplantis and Noah Lyles, who I think might get the edge primarily because he's done something no other sprinter has done since you said both in twenty fifteen and went unbeaten in the two hundred. It's it's a ridiculous field to select from. Um, you know, Mondo's world record again, another world title. You know, Grand Crozer with blood clots in his leg wins and wins and sets another world record. Um, you know, the Noah Lyles, 100, 200 meters, the champion, you know, at, at primarily 200 meter man, upsetting the 100 meter field and winning the 100 meter title. You know, emulating Usain Bolt from 2015. Of course, as we know, Usain Bolt is right now the, the gold standard of, of men's sprinting. So, I I don't know. I think it's going to be a close. Which whatever it is, I would be surprised if it's anything but a close vote to see who ends up on top of the men, because I think it's so so tight in terms of the accomplishments of each of these gentlemen, and it's. I, I don't envy the people who will have to vote on this because I don't know. I don't. I think what, what, anybody you pick yeah. would probably be would probably be a deserved winner. But you know, well, you well let, let me ask you a question, Leighton, that may help you to answer your own question as to who you think may go on to win the award. Um, what do you give precedence to generally um, in situations like this? Do you prefer? the athlete who has won more gold medals or do you prefer the athlete who is only able to contest one event and has broken the world record in that event i mean where do you generally sit on on, on in situations like this all right in this particular instance yes no lives has two world titles yes right the 100 and the 200 but i do believe that the world records bring some level of parity there because it means that you're the best of all time at that particular moment. Yes. So the plant is who has brought the world record seven times or brought it once again this year and winning the world title. Um, Ryan Crozer, who when he brought the world record last year in, in Oregon and people thought that that record was going to stand for a while and he breaks it again this year. And then of course as the world record to that coming off a situation where he's not at full health. I think the, those world records bring up the parity to a second world title. So, and that's the reason why it's difficult for me, because while Lyles has the number of titles, remember, he didn't even contest the Diamond League final. So, you know, when you look at what Prowser and the Plantis have done in terms of their respective Diamond League wins as well, I think they're right up there in terms of a serious candidate for the world athlete, of, male world athlete of the year, because I think it was World Records somehow bring up the parity to the second world title that Noah Lyons would have won, which is why it's been, and, and I know your question is supposed to make it easier, but it hasn't, <laughs> because in my mind, the World Records 
the world records do count for a lot. And when you set a world record, especially with the quality, look, I didn't think anybody would come along to be better than Sergey Kupka in the triple jump, in the, in the in pole the vault, vault yeah. Yeah. But when you look at what Mondo de Plantis has been doing, and he's like what? He's like 20, 22 years old. How can you not say he's probably a worthy candidate for world, I mean, world athlete of the year? Similarly, Ryan Crowther, who has done things that I don't think people thought were, were possible when, when Randy Barnes said that record, that contested record many years ago, under dubious circumstances, that, you know, albeit. But the thing about it is that Ryan Crowther has now separated himself, erased that record, and then established himself as perhaps the best shot putter in history. So there are a lot of things to consider when you're picking the men on the men's side this year, and I think it's going to be a very difficult task for those who have that job. Well, thank you very much, Leighton Levy, for absolutely nothing because you haven't really <laughs> helped us um, to determine who is going to win the men's award um, when, of course, they are presented on the 11th of December. So we'll be watching that closely. And also remember that the Jamaican Roshan Clark um, was shortlisted for the Rising Star Rising Award. Star. Um, so we'll see if he has a shot in that category as well. Um, thanks very much, Leighton, for joining us on the Sportsmag Zone, and we'll chat again for sure. Yeah, take it easy, guys. Sorry I could have been better help, though, but <laughs> it's what it is. I'm still matching myself with that decision. So Yeah, I'm sure you know, you'll be able to tell us on the 12th of December. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's take a break. We'll be back.